Hello and welcome to this vSuite version 0.4 video tutorial. And this video tutorial is, I'm very happy to say, the first in the version 0.4 series. So in this video I will just cover quite quickly uh, the basics of starting up and installing the add-on into Blender and um, navigating around the node editor which we use to control elements of the vSuite program and we'll create our first node, our very important VI location node. So if you've downloaded the zip file from the vSuite website and you've extracted the folder in that zip file to somewhere on your computer um, and you go into that folder and start up Blender you should see a screen very similar to this which is Blender's default screen setup. And we have our 3D view in the middle we have our toolbars over here. We have our outliner over here, which lists everything within our scene, and we can select things within the scene with this outliner if we wish. And down here we have our properties panels, where a lot of the different functions of Blender reside in these different tabbed panels. And the panels that we use mostly in the V-Suite are the material panel and this is where we set certain material characteristics for export to um, either radiance or energy plus backends. Um, we sometimes use the object data panel uh, but those are the two main panels that we use when we're uh, doing functions with the V-Suite. Um, the other panel that is not yet visible because I haven't activated the vSuite add-on will be in this 3D view properties panel which we can open up and close with the N key or we can open with this little plus sign at the top here and at the bottom of this panel when uh, kind of appropriate or applicable a display panel will appear which will be there to control the display of result metrics within the 3D view. But as I've not activated the vSuite add-on yet, there's nothing, there's nothing here. So let's proceed to create or register the vSuite add-on within Blender. If I go to File, User Preferences, oh and I will I did forget one last window which is the animation timeline where we can set up animations in Blender uh, and this is useful for setting up parametric analyses with the vSuite. Um, so once we've opened up user preferences if we go to the add-ons tab up here and if we select import export from the list on the left here and if I scroll down I should see import export vSuite version 0.4 and I click on this little square here to activate that add-on. Now I've activated the vSuite 0.4 before and so this is very quick. If it's the first time it can take a couple of seconds for this check in the checkbox to appear. Um, but once it's activated it's now registered within the um, Blender application. One change compared to version 0.3 is that if we click on this little arrow here then we have some preferences now and we can set um, the binary directory where all the Radiance applications exist and we can then select the folder where they exist. We can do so also for the Radiance library directory. We can also do it for the Energy Plus binary directory and we can do it for the Energy Plus weather directory, which we'll see in a moment when we talk about the VI location node. Um, these first three options require a Blender restart after you've saved the user settings. Um, this final option should be immediate. So once you've selected a directory in here, the vSuite should start looking in that directory for Energy Plus weather files. Um, I'm going to leave them all blank for the moment. If they're left blank, they simply default to the vSuite's built-in directory locations and if you downloaded the zip file from the website then the relevant Radiance binaries, libraries and the Energy Plus binaries are all included within that zipped folder anyway. 
So on a basic installation, you don't need to touch these. But if you install radiance yourself, or you have different radiance installations that you've compiled yourself with different functionality, for example, then you can select different directories here. So I'm just going to save my user settings. And now that the vSuite add-on has been activated within Blender, I can now change, for example, this animation timeline into a node editor. Uh, the, how Blender operates is beyond the scope of these video tutorials. There's loads of information on the internet about how to use Blender. Uh, but I will just say that Blender uses what is called a non-overlapping interface. So windows sit next to each other, they don't tend to overlap each other. And the boundary between these windows can be shifted as desired, or you can expand a particular window to fill the whole screen, etc. And each window can be changed into any other kind of window. So I can change the 3D view into an animation timeline. I can change it into a, a properties window. I can change it into a, another outliner window, whatever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change what was, or well, I have now changed what was the animation timeline window into a node editor window. And because the vSuite is comprised mainly of a, a set of Blender nodes, we do all the editing of those nodes within this node editor window. Now, at the bottom of the node editor window, we've got five icons. And we have five icons because we've activated the vSuite add-on. If we hadn't have activated the vSuite add-on, we'd only have three icons, the second, the fourth, and the fifth. Oh, so we get two new ones because we've activated the vSuite. And this one with the sun icon is kind of the general overall vSuite node um, sort of uh, node tree, node editor. And this windsock one is for setting up networks for energy plus analysis with Envy. Um, so we're just going to do for the moment, we're just going to use this overall node tree. So I select my sun icon and I press new here to create a new node tree which will be given the default name node tree and once I've created a node tree I can now add different vSuite nodes so to finish off this first initial tutorial I'm just going to add within the input nodes menu I'm going to add a VI location node a VI location node is very important because it sets the position of our simulation on the surface of the Earth. And it can do that either simply, if we have manual selected here, we can do it very simply just by selecting latitude and longitude. And that's sufficient for some path analysis and certain types of lighting analysis. Or we can turn it to EPW or Energy Plus weather file. And once we've set energy plus weather file, then we have a new menu item here. And that selects the weather file that we have registered with, with the vSuite. So at the minute, I've got just Birmingham on here, Birmingham in the UK. And that's because Birmingham in the UK is um, a weather file that is already in the vSuite default directory. If I, in the user preferences, if I change the energy plus weather default directory, then in here we would have the list of weather files resident in that new directory. But Birmingham's the only one I've got placed in the built-in default directory. So that's the only one that appears. Once I've set EPW, this is appropriate for all different types of analysis because this node will read the latitude and longitude from this energy plus weather file. Um, and then, this node can then be connected to subsequent nodes to specify the location for the subsequent simulation. So I think that's everything I need to cover for this first vSuite version 0.4 video tutorial. Okay, thanks for watching.